You all remember the Magpul FMG folding machine gun 9. It was announced at SHOT Show. It had to have been over a decade ago. I want to say 2010. We still haven't seen one come to market, but there have been a lot of manufacturers who have been intrigued by the idea, right? Including b and I'm James Reeves. We're here in Switzerland. I've been visiting B&T all this week, and one of the most exciting guns that they showed me while I was here was the B&T BWC. Sorry, I'm laughing. It's because they called it the Because We Can. Because We Can. B&T is actually ready to bring this gun to production. It's very similar to the Magpul FMG, but it's different enough to be something else. For that matter, the BWC is done a little bit differently. That is that, technically speaking, the component that B&T is going to make, that is the actual chassis, is just going to be a gun part. It's not going to be a gun because it's going to use a SIG P320 fire control unit. So if you have a 320 or if you want to just buy a 320 FCU, that's going to be the firearm. That's the registered component. You'll just buy this as a kit and then you'll be able to drop in your serialized FCU. Now, of course, you're going to have to form one it, at least if you're in the United States, because in the configuration that it's sold, when you drop that FCU in it, it becomes a short barreled rifle. So you will have to form one it if you want to get one of these, which I think a lot of you will. It seems to be a bit bigger than the original FMG9 prototype, but it's also really neat and it's almost all metal. The box, outer box itself, is completely made of aluminum. So there are some slight differences between the FMG9 and the BWC. Really neat though, <laughs> when I was talking with Carl Brueger, he showed me the original UC9. That was even predating the FMG9 made by Magpul. That's a machine gun that was all metal, folded out much in the same way, and it used a converted Uzi bolt. But you know what? I'm just gonna stop talking about it. Carl Brueger himself is gonna tell you about the new BWC. Hey everyone, James Reeves with TFB TV here at B&T in Switzerland with the man himself, the guy who owns the building, signs the checks, Carl Brueger. Thank you so much, Carl, for being on our program, TFB, our lowly program. We're talking about the brand new B&T BWC, which I'm really thrilled about, and I think a lot of people watching TFB TV are going to be really thrilled about. I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let the man himself well, give us the explanation. I know, and, and he's a very modest, humble guy. I want everyone to know that. You're a joy to have on the program, Carl. No, we like to sing, but first of all, it's not me who are important, it's a product and the team around. So I'm just a piece who can be replaced every day. Yes, that's So it's not important. So, <laughs> so to come to that thing that, you know, we call it BWC and the name says because we can. We had no real plan behind. We just did it as we found the former Magpul idea with the Glock rather sweet. Yeah, and we did it with a 6220 fire control group. Basically, we put a, a whole uh, gun from SIG inside as it's available and the idea was very simple. We did a similar thing. We had a uh, optic from aim point mounted on it and we can open it by pressing the lever. But the disadvantage is you have to put in the magazine up and it's open so it doesn't automatically open and you cannot ready to shoot. It's not going to go to work. As cool as the BWC is, there's one thing that bothered me. Why the magazine didn't seat automatically whenever the gun was deployed. So that's something I asked Carl about. We went to his favorite Italian restaurant in Tune. He got out the menu and started drawing on the back of it to illustrate that it's the geometry of the P320 fire control unit that necessitates that having to slap the magazine in after you completely deploy the chassis. Carl explains it here, I'm dumb, so I didn't really get it, but maybe you will. Then you have here, I think you have the trigger, right? We have the hinge point of the grip at the end will be here. So you have the grip here. And here is the trigger, it's the hinge which goes here. So when it turns here and you fold that down, the mag has to come up till here. So when you fold it down, this interface here will not allow the magazine to go out. So it will stop here and here. That's why you have to first fold it up and then put the magazine up. It's this, this measurement here. That's too narrow. I see. So if, That's a problem. So if you're doing the 320 fire control unit, 
it's just not possible. The magazine reload, you have to pull out the magazine as there is a strong spring in which prevents the magazine from opening, falling out when it's loaded. And let's start from square one because there are some people out there that may not know about the, the history of this design. This uh, is similar to the Magpul FMG, yep. which we saw years ago. Yep. I mean, certainly over a decade ago. This is basically a, a pistol that folds into like a, a very small sure. package yep. that looks something like a briefcase or like a really badass yep. lunchbox. Um, but this is a, a nine millimeter pistol. As you just explained, this one uses the SIG P320 fire control unit or fire control group. So technically, all I would have to do is I, I could buy this chassis and put in a SIG fire control group and I've got a firearm, is that correct? Does yeah, if you have the bolt and the barrel from the 320 as well. Okay, That's so that, needed. yeah, yeah, why don't we start from there? What, what do I need? Just the bolt and the barrel? And a complete the, uh, gun without the polymer. Okay. That's all you need. And so I could buy this. This is technically not a firearm until I assemble it with my P320. According to US law, you must know. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. So what made you want to do this? Yeah, you know, we always like those foldable things. I personally have a UC9, mm -hmm. this foldable subgun from the US. I imported one. Uh, we always thought it's cool to have. We did a similar thing for the TP380, but so far we never came out. And here we had the time and engineering to do it. We made 10 samples now. We're not sure if we ever will go to produce it in serial, as I don't think anybody will buy it. Oh my God. So we will see, so. Walk me through the features here. Like, how does it work? What, it, what does it do? I mean, we've got Picatinny rail on the top. It looks like, uh, you know, the ability to mount an optic. I mean, just walk me through it. Okay, basically it's designed to be like a cover. You can open here with the charging handle. When you press it back, you can open it. It folds and it locks the stock. You can lock the grip. And now you have to smash in the magazine, charge the weapon. Of course, with the magazine, it will go forward. And you're ready to go. To take it apart, you have to take the magazine out once it's empty, fold the magazine, and fold it back. And we put an acro on it in order to have a, a sight on it, as I think it's useless when you have no wire in sight and the, charge, the uh, carrying handle is simply here that you can carry it, so. And there is some utility, it's a cool thing, but there is some utility here. I mean, you're getting essentially better than pistol performance because you've got an additional point of contact, yep. right? 10 yards, five rounds, one hole. It's accurate with that little aim point acro, which it might be introduced in the United States with like as a combo package. That's eight rounds at 10 yards using the acro. Not bad. If you're carrying that around, people really aren't gonna know like kind of what. Whenever it's legal to carry around like this, it's okay, so. <laughs> yeah, I we mean, you know, know. It, we don't I mean, know. It, it doesn't look like, uh, I mean, anything in particular. It, it doesn't, but it doesn't look like a gun. Yep. either and I, I guess that's that's the important part so pick a tinny rail along the top you've got a little rail segment here like along with what would be which the is for color. nothing right it's we, useless is it really it's useless yeah. can you put anything on it at, yeah at but all? then you can't fold then, it then, then you can't fold it but uh, you know at least it's there right yeah. like giving you the option in order to fold it back up we've magazine got out. right magazine out to the right level there we go and then it kind of clips onto the the Picatinny rail here. Yeah. Now, you said you've made 10 of these. Yeah. Be honest with me. Are you thinking about or that you might make more? I mean, what, yeah, if, what if there's, you, I, I predict that there's going to be quite a bit of demand from people watching this video. If that demand is out there, would it be possible for you to make more of these? Yeah, yeah. you know, what, what we did, we, when we designed it, we made it in a way that we can machine it out of solid or out of a profile. For that, we are ready. There is some tooling to be made. Yeah, and if the demand is here and there is, let's say, at least 50 to 100 to be sold, we may go for tooling and do it. Oh my but God. we have no clue if that will ever happen. Oh, I, I guarantee you. Like, I, I'll bet my house on, on you selling 50 to 100 of these. I, I would think, I'd be surprised if yeah. you sold fewer than 1,000 because, uh, as I said, there are a lot of people out there who have 320 fire control groups that are already SBR'd for American viewers out there. 
they're already able to, to because this would be a short barreled rifle. You would need a Form 1 tax stamp fire control unit. Well, there are a lot of, of systems out there already, including the USW, where people have already Form 1'd it so they can put a stop mm -hmm. and use it. So uh, that in conjunction with the fact that the kit itself is not a firearm. As, yeah. Until you put that fire control unit in there, I think this is going to be immensely popular. I know that this is a, a, a bit of a, a reach here. I know you're probably not going to want to answer me, but let's say theoretically you made a hundred of these. How much ballpark would this cost me in the United States? Twelve hundred dollars, fourteen hundred dollars, mm -hmm. maybe. Uh -huh. We'll see. With an aim point, we will probably try to put that in you to, make to, package my, it? Yeah. to make it more attractive. Well, I, I think it's pretty damn attractive, Carl. I think, honestly, you're going to sell a shit ton of these. I think we it's really see, cool. We will see, so. Oh, we will see. I'm glad see. if you see it as cool, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, no, no, I think it is. Can't wait to get down, try it out at the range here okay. in, the, in the basement. Yeah. Thank you for walking me and everyone else watching TFB TV yeah. through this. I appreciate well, it. Thank you, too. I know a lot of people are really excited. I posted just a short nine second cell phone video of the BWC shooting it at B&T HQ on my Instagram and it got like 70 something thousand views in 24 hours. So I know a lot of people are pumped to finally see one come out to market. Will the B&T, at least according to Carl personally, yeah, it's on the way and it's really going to happen. Time will tell. Guys, stay tuned. We're bringing you more from B&T here in Switzerland.